sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Well, it's here. It's finally here. The mighty, the powerful, the urban mech. For those who only play the uh, Mech Warrior Online game and do not have any kind of past experience with the Battletech universe, you're probably wondering what is the point of this? Why? Why would they make such a thing? There's an interesting story behind the Urban Mech, and it is actually one of the key mechs in the Battletech Wait, universe. Okay. Believe it or not, it's a very common mech Sensors in the Battletech online. universe. It's seen a lot in certain situations. And you might be wondering, why? It's so slow. One quote from one of the Battletech books is, you don't know slow until you see an urban mech trying to run on uphill. In fact, they did give it jump jets uh, just to give it something to, to be able to do for maneuvering. The urban mech is a mighty powerful mech in its role. Urban combat. It's designed to sit at a crossroads and defend it deny anyone all access. No one gets through there. Uh, you don't know misery until you are in a, your group of mechs come up crest a hill and see a line of urban mechs standing to shoulder to shoulder. Think, oh, shoot. I'm told that there's actually a uh, book that has an optional rule because of the urban mech's uh, low short profile that it actually gets a, a bonus to its defense. I've never seen that per first hand, so I don't know but I, I'm told. But that's not why the urban mech is so common. You might be wondering, what's the oh, point? Why? Because it, it can't be that awesome and powerful. It's only a 30-ton mech. It can mount some decent weapons, but, you know, quite frankly, so can any other mech. Why? Its low speed can't be that powerful in, in the defensive role. I'll tell you. I will unlock the mystery of the Urban Mech and the Locust, actually. The two mechs go side by side. See, the Locust is fast, light, agile, good for reconnaissance, scouting. Uh, in numbers, they can devastate and overwhelm. I've, seen, I've known many people that have done demonstrations and tests with, based on the standard tech, 3025, uh, you used to be able to do tonnage. What that is, is you would have 100 ton, well actually the two teams would usually divide 200 tons. One person could take two atlases, for example, the other team could take you know, whatever tonnage combination they wanted for 50 ton mechs like the Hunchback or various other combinations. You know, as long as it totaled 200 tons, then they'd get together and do these battles. Well, they would do a 100 ton version. Because uh, there are some people out there that are just obsessed with the awesomeness and power of the assault mech. Nothing can rival. All right, fine. You take your assault mech, whether it be the awesome 80 tons Victor. And most of the time, it was done with an atlas for a full hundred tons, versus that to five locus. The locus one. Maybe there's somebody out there because the locus pilots didn't know what they were doing. Uh, terrain, dumb luck. Who knows? I'm sure somewhere out there. Somebody did the demonstration and the Atlas won. I've never heard of it. I've done it myself. I know several other people have done it with people trying to show them that the assault mechs by themselves aren't so great. The assault mechs by themselves are very vulnerable. When you're outnumbered 5 to 1 with a bunch of little uh, fast uh, light mechs running around you, devastating. You can have similar results, though I don't know of anyone that's actually done the test between three urban mechs totaling 90 tons versus one atlas. I don't know how that would go. It might go well. It'd be a, to me, it'd be a curious test to do sometime. At any rate, the, the key is, with speed and in numbers, you can overwhelm a stronger opponent. So that explains the locus. But why the urban mech? It's slow. The thing is, you have to understand the campaign options in Battletech. You could actually create a character and just have one mech and start playing. And, and I know people who've done this and played the character for two or three years before he had 
build up enough money for them to be able to buy a second mech and hire another pilot to run that mech for them. A dispossessed pilot, as it's called. And you can start building up your unit like that. It takes a lot longer. Uh, there are other options in the game where you can create your character and shoot some dice and get some money together and resources. But if you don't take title of knight or uh, anything there, if you don't take well connected and a couple other things that can bonus and modify those situations, it can be very hard to get the money together to start a mercenary unit. But suppose, based on your thing and you go into the tables and it takes you, say, two years to get the funding together and you get $15 million. Alright, now you can start your mercenary unit. Now you want to have some money left over. So you don't want to spend it all because you're going to have to come up with your payroll and transportation it might be needed in order to get to your first job. So let's set one million aside. Okay, so you have 14 million. Go buy your mechs. You can buy an Atlas K. Well, no, you can't because that costs 22 million. Um, let's go with the Atlas D. All right, 10 million. No problem. All right, you should have 4 million. Uh, with the standard battle tech, it gets complex when you have the... XL engines and things, but it, the rule of thumb with the standard technology is 1 million per ton. So, but it's a little inaccurate with some of the upper and lower ends. So you have 4 million, so you could get roughly a 40 ton mech. Uh, that would be like a Whitworth to support the Atlas. Not looking like a very good mercenary unit. I've seen worse, but not looking so good. Or, for 14 million, actually less than that, you could get 12 Locusts. You could outfit an entire company for... Because they, they run roughly 1.2 million each, depending on your version and uh, variance. You might be able to make a roll or two and get a good deal. But you can get them cheap. The Urban Mech, because it is a light mech, 30 tons, it has a very small engine in it, which is usually the most expensive component of the mech. It's very cheap. So really, this is why the Urban Mech and Locust are so common in the Battletech universe. And by the tables of random encounters and stuff, they are very common mechs. And it's because they're cheap. You can outfit an entire unit with them. Then once you start getting some battle experience, some salvage and pay going, you can then start trying to upgrade and incorporate larger and more powerful mechs into your unit. But really, the Urban Mech is the poor man's assault mech. It's slow, but you max out the armor, it's not bad, and it's armor. And it's able to carry some big guns. Uh, there is a version that carries an AC-20 in the Battletech universe, and the most common one is the AC-10. AC-10, one ton of ammo, and one small laser. Just to give you an idea of in the urban situation, where it's more difficult to group multiple mechs on top of one because it's easy to hide around a corner and deal with opponents one or two at a time. I know people have gone in and uh, to urban situations against urban mechs and they have been absolutely chewed up. They may have won, but they were absolutely chewed up. I took a unit, my mercenary unit at the time was a reinforced company, total of 15 mechs, mostly heavy in assault. It's a long story how I got that together, that's a whole other story. Went into an urban setting up against mostly uh, medium and light. There was one heavy, which was their command mech. Everything else was medium or light. I had them way out tonnaged, but because they were faster, more agile, more maneuverable, uh, they chewed me up. I won, but barely. Uh, the joke is I had a Phoenix Hawk, which was one of the lighter units, mechs in my unit. And it was holding one flank by itself. The uh, pilot of that, that one was uh, named Jan Carraway, I believe. And she was voted most valuable uh, pilot. That was not the person playing that unit, it was just that pilot name. Yeah. Most valuable pilot in that battle, because that one was held the entire flank all by herself, while I desperately tried to piece together my center and the other flank. It, it was... Of course, the Phoenix Hawk has a whole nother reputation and legend behind it. Uh, it's sad that it's been uh, removed. At any rate, that's my information, what I wanted to put together for people to understand and hear about and learn of the urban mech. The mech. The legend.